Okay, so here's a video. Here's an article, along with some videos. I like to discuss. That's to do with what President Trump calls the Chinese virus, and somebody call it Kung Kung Flu, like in Kung Fu, you know, Kung Fu, Chinese Kung Fu, like Bruce Lee. I'm not sure if this is the time to be making jokes about something serious like this, but that's the road we're heading down right now. Anyway, so here's the byline of the article. This deals with Kellyanne Conway. This lady here, who is counsel to the to President Trump, and just it's uh, the violent title. I'm married to an Asian. Kellyanne Conway responds to criticism of a White House official, reportedly calling the coronavirus the the Kung flu. You see, Kung flu. A, a takeaway on Kung Fu. White House Counsel Kellyanne Conway responded to criticism over the White House. The White House is conflating the novel coronavirus with China by saying, I'm married to an Asian. Conway's husband, attorney, and Trump critic George Conway is of Filipino descent on his mother's side. Conway made the remark in response to reporters questioning Trump's use of the term China virus and an unidentified White House official called the virus the Kong flu in front of an Asian American reporter. Kellyanne Conway, a top White House advisor and counsel to the president, responded to criticism over the White House's conflating the novel coronavirus with China by saying, I'm married to an Asian, when speaking to reporters on Wednesday. Conway made the remark in response to reporters questioning President Donald Trump's use of the term China virus to refer to the coronavirus and an unidentified White House official reportedly calling the virus the Kung flu in front of CBS News correspondent Weijia Jiang, who is Asian American. Yeah, I know Weijia Jiang. She's Chinese American. She used to work in in the um, she used to work with the CBS local station here the flagship station, CBS station here in New York City. Now she works in the national level for the national uh, CBS. All right. So let's see here. There's a video there. I'm not going to play that video. I'm just going to read through this. When PBS News Hour correspondent Yamich Alcindor Press Conway to denounce the reported Kong Fu flu remark, Conway responded, That's been alleged. I am not dealing in hypotheticals here. Of course, it's wrong. But you can't just make an accusation and not tell us who it is <laughs> before pressing herself to reveal the staffer's identity. I think the irony here if I may use that word, is that, okay, this person is saying clung flu, but how about her boss, Trump, calling it the Chinese virus? So Ouija, who was it? Tell us. I think we ought to know, Conway said. You understand how these conversations go, Jiang said. Conway replied, I don't know how these conversations go, and that's highly offensive. So you should tell <laughs> you should tell us who it is. 
I like to know who it is. I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals. I'm married to an Asian. My kids are partly. I'm married to an Asian American. My kids are 25 percent Filipino. Conway's husband, attorney and vocal Trump critic, George Conway, is of Filipino descent on his mother's side. He declined to comment on his wife's remarks in response to a Twitter message from Insider. In her remarks to reporters, Kelly and Conway said Trump is justified in calling the coronavirus the China virus or Chinese virus because it was first identified in the city of Wuhan, China. Yeah, right. Just like how um, HIV AIDS, right? We all know the first time you heard about it was identified right here in America, I believe, out in San Francisco among uh, gay people. <laughs> But it's not called the American virus for some reason, right? It's called uh, uh, the human uh, HIV, human immuno, whatever, compromise virus, immunodeficiency compromised virus. It's not called the American virus. But this came out of China, it says the China virus. Right? So other top Republican officials have also maintained that calling it the China virus or Wuhan virus is necessary to lay the blame for the current situation on the actions of the Chinese party, the ruling party in China, for its inadequate response to the virus and attempts to silence whistleblowers who first sounded the alarm. But critics say that instead of holding the Chinese government accountable, conflating a virus with an entire country and nationality unfairly stigmatizes and ultimately fuels xenophobia against people of Asian and Chinese descent who are not responsible for the virus's outbreak or the Chinese government response uh, to it, which is true. The average Chinese person has nothing to do with it, <laughs> and many Chinese people here may not even be born in America. You know, I mean, maybe born right here, not even born in China. So, I mean, you know, what's going around is really sad that people just go around attacking people who are Asian or look Asian because of a virus that came out of uh, China. All right, so yeah, let's see. Here's a comment here I pulled out. Somebody calls himself Thomas, right there. Thomas said, my spouse is Chinese, right? Let's see, so he, he opens the line by saying, my spouse is Chinese, okay. So that means probably he's going to make excuses now, right? That being said, both of us call this a Chinese virus. Yeah, seriously now. If you have a, if you have a Chinese spouse, a Chinese wife, we are supposed to believe she's going to call a Chinese, Chinese virus, right? With everything that's happening, Chinese people being attacked in the street, whether they wear a mask or whether they don't wear a mask or walking down the street, one woman in, in New York City uh, was punched, an Asian woman, I think Chinese, was punched. Her jaw was dislocated. They had to take her to the hospital. So why would any Chinese person in their right mind agree with something like this? So this is what this guy is saying. So both of us, he and his Chinese wife, call this the Chinese virus. And it did originate in China. If there are people so concerned about this, while all else is going on, then they should start with history books and get the Spanish flu renamed, as it most likely did not originate in Spain. How about that? West Nile virus. Better get rid of that one. Of course, don't forget about German measles. 
That's got to change. How about Ebola? That's a river in Zaire, Africa. Can't have that one. Didn't even want to mention Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Then there's what? <clears throat> Lyme disease, named after Lyme, Connecticut, where it was first recognized. Don't want to besmudge those poor folks in Lyme, Connecticut. Time to get on Wikipedia and start rewriting the history of uh, medicine. Okay. Let's see. I did some research in the the, the Chinese the Spanish flu. And from what I from what I understand, let's see here. The Spanish flu was was even though they, they really had no uh, idea where it originated from, but let's go back to history here. And get this right. Apparently, uh, in the Spanish flu, in the spring of 1918, just as the man made horrors of World War I were finally starting to wind down, Mother Nature unleashed the deadliest, tr deadliest strain of influenza in modern history. The virus infected as much as 40% of the global population over the next 18 months. Of these, an estimated 20 to 50 million perished, more than the roughly 17 million people killed during World War One. That's 17 million. That's a lot of people killed during World War One. The pandemic's grasp stretched from the United States and Europe to the remote reaches of Greenland and the Pacific Islands. Its victims included the likes of President Woodrow Wilson, who contracted it while negotiating the Treaty of Versailles in early 1990. As the pandemic reached epic proportion in the fall of 1918, it became commonly known as the Spanish Flu. Or the Sp or the Spanish lady in the United States and Europe. Many assume this was because the sickness had originated on the Iberian Peninsula, but the nickname was actually the result of a widespread misunderstanding. Spain was one of only a few major European countries to remain neutral during World War I. Unlike in the Allied and Central Powers nations, where wartime censors suppressed news of the flu to avoid affecting morale, the Spanish media was free to report on its gory detail. News of the sickness first made headlines in Madrid in late May 1918, and coverage only increased after the Spanish king Alfonso XIII came down with a nasty case of a week later. Since nations undergoing a media blackout could only read in-depth accounts from Spanish news sources, they naturally assumed that the country was the pandemic's ground zero. The Spanish, meanwhile, believed the virus had spread to them from France, so they took to calling it the French flu. While it's unlikely that the Spanish flu originated in Spain, scientists are still unsure of its source. France, China, and Britain have all been suggested as the potential birthplace of the virus, as has the United States, where the first known case was reported at a military base in Kansas on March 11, 1918. So, <laughs> the Spanish, what we know of the Spanish flu, actually, the first known case was reported here in the United States. Same as, same as HIV AIDS was first reported in the United States. Yet, we don't call it uh, uh, um, American, uh, the American virus. Researchers has also conducted 
extensive studies on the remains of the victims of the pandemic, but they have yet to discover why the strain that ravaged the world in 1918 was so lethal. Let's see. So, okay, so this guy mentioned, uh, let's go back to him. He mentioned here, let's see, Thomas is his name. Uh, Thomas. So he mentioned the Spanish flu, so we went through that. West Nile virus, of course, uh, the Nile is in Egypt, you know, so it, it doesn't say anything about Egyptians, it just said Nile, the Nile River is in Egypt, that river that flows from south to north, that goes up in uh, from different countries, flows to different countries, and that's where this virus originated. <laughs> but it talks about the, it, it mentions, uh, it got its name from the river, the Nile, not a specific country. All right, so he mentions also Ebola, which is a, a river in Zaire, Africa. All right, but it does, they don't call it the Zaire um, virus. Then he mentions Lyme disease in a place called Lyme, Connecticut. Okay. So this is where this particular uh, tick was first uh, noted or found in a place called Lyme, Connecticut. And then also, I think he mentioned Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Also, that has to do with the out west, when you go out, I guess, places like Colorado and so forth, that's where they found those ticks that caused that kind of disease. And of course, you had like Legionnaire's disease. Legionnaire's disease, they call that because uh, they had some Legionnaire's convention. Um, like people in the military, they belong to the American Legion, and they have a convention, and in the in, in the particular hotel they stayed in, I believe it was in Pennsylvania, probably Philadelphia. And uh, the centralized uh, dock system with the air and so forth, the circulation, that's where you had uh, this, partic this particular um, organism that was in there that people were breathing in, like some sort of a mold or something like that. And that's where it got, it's got his name. Now, interesting, he mentioned uh, the German measles. Now, the, there are two types of measles. The one is what we call the measles, and another one they call the German measles. Right? The, the regular measles is a bad one. The, the one that really can really mess you up. That one. Okay. You don't really see much people. Well, that was in the news lately because um, <laughs> people were not getting their kids vaccinated. So we had an outbreak of measles here in the United States. In certain areas, certain people claim religion and they don't want to. Um, they don't want to vaccinate their kids, so they, that's that's what happened. They run the risk. They run the risk of um, getting the measles. Okay. So the regular measles is called rubella, whereas the German measles is called rubella. The one that they say like pregnant women have to be careful. They can't be really around somebody with um, rubella, which is the German measles. The German measles is the one where you get like the red spots and so forth. Affects the skin, lymph nodes, but not as not as bad. However, if, if a pregnant woman 
catches it, it can affect the fetus of the baby. So this is why when you work in healthcare, you're supposed to get like the MMR vaccination, the mumps, measles, rubella, MMR. So you pr protect. If you come to a patient who is pregnant, you protect that patient. So let's see here. Now with the German measles, this guy mentioned uh, German. Since we're talking about China, the China virus and the German measles. So let's get this straight. German physician Daniel Sernert, Sernert first described the disease in 1619, calling it rotian or rubella for the reddish colored rash that accompanies the illness. Rubella was first distinguished from a more serious infection disease, measles or rubiola, rubiola in the early 19th century. It came to be called German measles in the latter part of the 19th century when the disease was closely studied by German physicians. So this is how it got its name. It, it didn't get its it didn't get its name because of the country Germany, <laughs> you know, not like with China. It didn't get its name like it. Was, it got its name because the people who did a really intensive study on it had to be German physician, and that's how it got its name. You know, that's how the name came up. Uh, German measles to distinguish it from the other uh, measles, the the other measles, the one that can make you deaf and so forth. The one that we had the outbreak with recently, and this is rub so the the term we use is rubella, even though they call it uh, German measles, but the conventional term is rubella. So the rubella virus was first isolated in 1962, and a vaccine was made available in 1969. Rubella occurred worldwide before immunization programs were instituted, with minor epidemics arising every six to nine years, and major epidemics every 30 years because of its mildness. It was not considered dangerous illness until 1941, when Australian ophthalmologist N. McAllister Gregg discovered that prenatal infection with the virus was responsible for congenital malformations in children. Let's see. So in 2015, following an intense 15 year long vaccination campaign, in 2015 it was not that long ago, right? It was five years ago. The American the Americas were declared to be free of endemic rubella transmission. The rubella virus is spread through the respiratory route, being shed in droplets of respiratory secretions from an infected person. The incubation period is 12 to 19 days, with most cases occurring about 15 days after exposure. Something similar like uh, this um, coronavirus that we're talking about, the coronavirus uh, 19, the first symptoms appear to appear sore throat and fever, followed by swollen glands and a rash that lasts about three days. Infected individuals tend to be more, most contagious when a rash is erupted. The duration and severity of the illness are variable and complications are rare. Although encephalitis, which is a swelling of the, the inflammation of the brain, encephalitis, may follow. As many as 30% of infections are thought to occur without symptoms. Once infected, a person develops lifelong immunity to rebella. So that's the good news to that for that. Okay, let's let's move on to some of what Trump actually said. Alright, here's a tweet from Trump. 
He said the United States will be powerfully supporting those industries like airlines and others that are particularly affected by the Chinese virus. We will be stronger than ever before. So here he is, he calls it the Chinese virus, right? Let me get rid of this page here. Let's see. Okay. Let's play this video here. Trump sees absolutely nothing wrong with somebody in the who works in the White House referring to the coronavirus as a kung fu or kung fu, you know, like Bruce Lee kung fu. If you remember Bruce Lee, the Chinese actor, kung fu, he sees nothing wrong with that. <laughs> he said, "Well, it came from China," you know. I mean, to me, that comes across as so insensitive. Especially in a time when uh, people that are Chinese are being attacked. Uh, I remember I read an article where a Chinese girl said that uh, some businesses are saying, well, nobody from China works here in this business. You know, like Chinese take our food or so forth to reassure people. Um, I just came down, I was out a little early and there was a, there's a Chinese store not near me, but a little distance from me, and I pass by, and it's closed. <laughs> and they're usually open. I mean, these people will be open Christmas, and who knows, maybe New Year's, and they and, and they close. And most likely, they probably close due to what's going on with with everything that's in the news lately. You see, so Trump sees nothing wrong with that. So okay, here's another one from today. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? There are reports of dozens of incidents of virus against Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term because ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? It's not racist at all, no. Not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. I want to be accurate. Yeah, it's China. I have a great, I have great love uh, for all of the people from our country, but uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stop now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. Uh, it comes from China. So, uh, going back to 1981, HIV AIDS uh, was discovered here in the United States of America. <laughs> nobody calls it uh, nobody calls it the American virus, right? You know, nobody calls it the American virus. So this particular 
Which, by the way, uh, scientists have a certain name, you know, the nomen nomenclature. That's the term they use to, to name certain things, whether it's a virus or whether plants or so forth. They have a certain sequence, the way they name certain things. It depends and, and what it is. But to, to, to say that something is a Chinese virus, I mean, really now, you know, that's just playing up. That's to, to, to me, you know, if, if I may use the word, there's a word called invidious. That's like making a so-called invidious comment to incite ill will. The fact that, you know, we we live in a time where people that are Asian, sometimes they're not even Chinese, are being attacked because of people's ignorance. And yet the President of the United States is given a news conference and he's doubling down on the word Chinese virus. And he wouldn't give him, and he, and he sees nothing, he's saying it's not racist. It's not racist because it came from, uh, it came from China. You know, SARS also came from China. <laughs> Do we call SARS a Chinese virus? No. You know, SARS is identified because of the respiratory distress. That's why, right? If you look at the term SARS, the acronym what it has to do with you see it's a severe it's a severe respiratory expression so so this is why they use the word SARS okay so Trump doubles down on that he sees absolutely nothing wrong with calling this the Chinese virus and he should know better now let's see here. So, with all with all that's going on, now we see here. U.S. gun store owners say Asian customers are buying weapons over coronavirus backlash fears. Let me read this. Gun stores are reporting a sharp rise in the number of Asian people purchasing firearms to protect themselves from racist attacks amid the corona coronavirus outbreak. David Liu, the owner of Acadia Firearm and Safety in San Gabriel Valley, has claimed that he has seen around 10 times more customers walk through his door in recent weeks. It was crazy, Lou told Newsweek. One example is on March 3rd and 4th, I had 50 plus people come in here to take the firearm safety test and every one of them bought a gun. That's quite unusual for my small shop. They're all coming in because the media is telling them that Asians are being targeted, Chinese are being targeted. In recent weeks, several Asian people in the U.S. have been targeted in hate crimes in response to the virus, which was first detected in Wuhan, China in December. Earlier this month, an Asian male was sprayed with what appears to be an air freshener, right, by a man on a New York subway. The suspect was recorded yelling because he is standing right effing next to me. Tell him to move. Apparently concerned he would infect him with the airborne spread virus. So you see, this is how ridiculous this is now to the point. <laughs> Somebody Asian standing in front of you on the subway and you know being that I live here in New York City and I've been on the train like when I would go to work in the morning you know the trains are crowded yeah yeah Asian people live in Brooklyn and coming off from I don't know Bensonhurst and other parts of Brooklyn you know I mean the train so what are you supposed to do now you know I mean run away from Asian people like you know like if somebody's like they do with homeless people on the train when somebody 
is homeless and the stink the stink of the train and uh, the train is all smelly and the homeless person is just uh, lying there in the seat and wow the seats are empty you know and it's kind of funny because sometimes I've seen that where like the train seems to be like packed a lot of people and then somebody comes in and they see like a seat that's empty and they look they got a happy look on their face and as they go to take that seat <laughs> that empty seat they realize a homeless person who is all smelly and stinky is lying down in that seat <laughs> and then that smile just disappears from their face because they realize oh my god you know that's not what they wanted that seat, the reason that seat is empty is because some smelly person is sitting there on that seat. So in February, an Asian woman was also allegedly attacked at a subway station while wearing a protective mask in a suspected hate crime attack. The Acadia Fire and Emin Safety Store is situated in an area with a large population of Asian Americans. Let's see. All right. So, let's go back a little. One Acadia Fireman Safety customer, Dirk Zhang, told CBS LA, now is the perfect time to get a firearm for ourselves added that his wife previously would not allow a gun in their home she's a little afraid of the outbreak of the virus he added lou said that panic in the community got worse when news reports suggested that some cities may have to be put on lockdown to deal with the outbreak he said it is not just asian people who are reacting to the spread of the outbreak I have checked with my distributor and most of their ammo is gone. It can be bought by just the Chinese. Americans are stuck up too, he told Newsweek. It's just most Chinese don't have guns. They just come in and buy them now. Other stores in California have seen a similar trend. Normally, we are a pretty busy store. But this made it really crazy. Dennis Lin, owner of Gun Effects and Cloud 9 Fishing in Industry, told KABC. Lin also described an uptake in the number of gun sales at his store in an area with a large Asian American community. He said, some are purchasing weapons over fears of being targeted because of their race. Just people discriminating, said Lynn. We forget. We are all people. We are in America. We are not in China. One customer, April Zhao, confirmed she came to gun effects to purchase a weapon over concerns she may be attacked for being Chinese. So I have to protect my family and my son, Zhao told LA East, adding she has yet to experience any racism in her hometown of Rancho Cucamonga. So here we see here some guns there on display. The sales associate takes a gun from a display of shotguns at the gun store November 14, 2008 in Las Vegas. A similar rise and Asian Americans purchasing guns has also been reported in Washington, the U.S. state worst affected by the outbreak. The main thing I'm learning, I'm hearing, is that they don't want to get jumped because of their race. Cole Goran, 
the internet sales manager at Wade's Eastside Guns in Bellevue, previously told the Chase, gun effects and Acadia firearms and safety have both been contacted for further comment. There are now over 1,300 cases of coronavirus in the U.S. According to Johns Hopkins University, with 38 deaths and 8 recoveries. Well, that was the time of this article. Now there are over 100 deaths in the United States. And I believe over 2,000 cases of infections. So, we passed the, the 100 mark. Of course, nothing like Italy or China. The graphic below provided by Statista illustrates the spread of the COVID-19 or COVID-19 across the world as of March 12th. There's a map right there. 80,958 infection in China. So the deep, the deep red here is 10,000 plus. That's 10,000 plus. And look at the U.S. Hmm. The U.S. is not that high as yet, but sooner or later we head in that way. Let's see. The yellow is 1 to 50, just like Mexico. Mexico is right below here. That's 1 to 50. Brazil will be 51 to 150. I think the first death in Brazil was reported today. 151 to 1,000. There. 1,001 to 9,999. That'd be the United States right there. China, of course, 10,000 plus. And Italy. I believe Italy is also over that number. Hong Kong and Macau included in China figure as of March 12, 2020 at 6 a.m. EST source, Johns Hopkins University. And the World Health Organization advice for avoiding spread of coronavirus. So, so this is the story here. So, we have the President of the United States in times of chaos, in times of war, in times of natural disasters, in times of epidemic, in times of pandemic. We're supposed to have somebody with a level head who can pull the nation together, bring people together, and say, you know what, this is the time to bring everybody together, that we all Americans, regardless of where your ethnicity, where you, you know, where you came from, or where your ancestors came from, and so forth, that in the end, we're all Americans, and we have to think that way moving forward. Instead, he's using the term the China virus. Uh, he sees nothing wrong with with Kung Fu, Kung Flu, you know, like Kung Fu, Kung Flu, which is making fun, you know, a derivative of the term Kung Fu. He sees nothing wrong with that, and he sees nothing, nothing, nothing is racist at all, <laughs> which is really, really, uh, it's really striking. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that video again. Let's see. Okay. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? There are reports of dozens of incidents of bias against 
Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? A lot of people say it's racist. It's not racist at all, no. Not at all. It comes from China. That's why. I'm just trying to be accurate. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I have a great, I have a great love uh, for all of the people of our country. But uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stopped now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. That was caused by President. Uh, it comes from China. Well, you know, if if somebody in the Chinese uh. Communist Party suggest that it was it, that the virus was brought there by the American military, what have you. Yeah, you, then you then you deal with that. You deal with that through the the State Department. You know, you that's why you have ambassador, right? We have a we have an an American ambassador in Beijing, China. You know, we have that, and we and we have the Chinese ambassador in Washington. So what you do is. The State Department would normally call in the, the, the Chinese ambassador in Washington right there, right, for consultations. <laughs> and they would say, you know, we want you, Mr. Chinese ambassador, whatever his name is, we want you come into the State Department. We need to see you and talk. We need to have a consultation with you. That's the way you do it. You, you use diplomatic channels, you know. That's that's the way you do it. You you sit down with the Chinese ambassador and you say, no, this is wrong. You have somebody tweeting that uh, American military or army took the the coronavirus to Wuhan, China, and spread it. That's irresponsible, and we can't have that. And you you lecture the the Chinese ambassador to the United States. That's the way you do it. Through diplomatic channel, you don't have the president of the United States standing there and say, "Well, you know what? Somebody in the Chinese government or Chinese party tweeted that the virus was brought there by the American military in Wuhan, China. So, so we gonna play their game too? No, that's for like little little kids play those kind of games. You see, that's how that's how juveniles behave." When you're going to say, well, they did it too, he started it, so I do it, you know? When you're growing up, you know, when you're like nine years old, ten years old, oh, he hit me first, so I hit him back. Oh, he did this, he did this, he did that, I did it too. I only did it because he did it. And this is this is what's coming out of Trump. You know, it's like he, yeah, I'm, so he's president, so, okay, so the Chinese person tweeted something stupid, and because it didn't, you, you, you can't stand for that. So you have to go around calling the Chinese virus instead of telling the Secretary of State to call in the Chinese ambassador and say, uh, you know, we, we, we summon you for consultations to the State Department. We want to see you over here at the State Department. We need we need to talk to you about something here. That's not right, and and that's what you do. That's what you, it's supposed to be done. Not not the president standing up there and saying, "Well, they they they, they made a false statement." So you know they made a statement and say the American military brought it to China. So we are gonna just call it the Chinese virus. Yeah. So it's tit for tat. That's like like to say tit for tat, butter for fat, that kind of stuff. There's federal, there's reporting that the federal government has a, a plan that shows this coronavirus outbreak might last as much as long as 18 months. Are you seeing those numbers? Could it no, actually last? Sure. And then the, the second, my second question is: there are some, at least one White House official, who use the term "kung flu," referring to the fact that this virus started in China. Is that acceptable? Is it wrong? Are you worried that? That having this virus be, uh, be talked about as as a Chinese virus, that that might I wonder who said that. You know who said that? I'm not sure the person's name, but would you condemn the fact that Chinese virus? A person at the White House used the term Kung Flu. My question is, do you think that's wrong, Kung Flu? And do you think using the term Chinese virus that puts Asian Americans at risk that people might target them? No, no, no. I think they probably. 
uh, would agree with it 100%. It comes from China. There's nothing not to agree with it. How about the last question? Switching gears to a larger audience, what are the biggest challenges that you have faced before the pandemic? There were a lot of Americans that were already alienated. We saw deaths of despair increasing through suicide and other things. Now, as these individuals, a lot of times in rural parts of the country, are self isolating, what is your message to those individuals, and what do you hope that individuals Communities and churches will My message is to all Americans, but to those Americans who are going through a lot, we love them, we're with them, and we will not let them down. Thank you all very much. Yeah, just, just, just remember that HIV, uh, the AIDS virus, uh, as far as we know, that was, uh, that was found in the U.S. among a certain population. In the United States, and nobody called it the American virus, for the record. <laughs> it, they came up; the scientists came up with their own term: the HIV, human Im immunodepressed uh, virus, it, immunodepressed, showing that the body is uh, the immunity is compromised, and so forth. They came up with a scientific term for it. Not the China, not the China virus, not the American virus. And like with the German measles, you had the regular measles, and you had the German measles with rubella. And the only reason they call it German measles is because the German physicians were studying that particular measles. That's why they got the name German measles. But it had nothing to do with Germany. So that's it. You know, we have to we we have to be better than that. We have to show that we are grown up, and we can't just talk like that because words have consequences. You know, there's like there's like a line in the Bible somewhere that speaks about we should use words to edify people, mean to build up people, not to tear not to tear them down. And when we live in a society where we have so many different people, different cultures, and so forth, you know, you look to you look to the president. You you look for leadership. You look at you, you don't look at somebody who is like nine years old and saying, "Well, he he did it. Oh, he said that." So you know, he said something about my mother. So I said something about his mother too. <laughs> you know, you expect that kind of stuff from juveniles. Yeah, yeah. He, he said this bad word about my mother, so I'm not going to take it. I'm going to say something bad about his mother, too. This is actually what's going on here now. Instead of, like, having grown up and saying, no, 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 this is not the way we, we behave. We don't talk like that. We're better than that. You know, it's, it's time to grow up, Mr. President. And for all those people who support you, what have you, and people in the Asian American community support you, they should realize that really your words really have uh, an effect that's heard around the world. You see, the President of the United States, his words are very powerful. <laughs> they go around the, the world. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, somebody said that Harry Truman, when he was about to leave office and it was the inauguration day, and the new president was coming in, Eisenhower, and Truman was looking out the window. He was staring out the window, and somebody asking, you know, Mr. President, uh, what are you thinking? And, and Harry Truman said, you know what? He said, 15 minutes from now, he's talking about after the new president is thrown in, and he's no longer president. He said, fifth, he said, 15 minutes from now, I could say anything, and nobody would give a damn. He said, as president right now, I could say something, and my whatever I say would go around the world in no time. But 15 minutes from now, after the after the inauguration, I'm no longer president. Nobody gives a damn what I say. And you know, Harry Truman is right. 
Or Harry Kuman was right. And when he also had that sign that said, the box stops here. He, he had that sign, the box stops here. When somebody asked Trump, um, you know, do you take responsibility <laughs> for like the delay and we don't have enough tests? He said, no, I'm not responsible. Now, Harry Truman said the buck stops here and he had that in his death. I take responsibility. Even though people below him might have messed up or what have you, it, cut, it falls back on him and he takes responsibility. So, ladies and gentlemen, we deal with uh, we deal with a president in office right now who takes responsibility for nothing whatsoever. Couldn't care less. Takes no responsibility. Doesn't show leadership at the top to say no. We don't use words like that. You know, we don't. We should use words to edify, not to tear people down. You have people going out punching people. Guy, uh, I saw on on the on the TV in a video, an Asian woman wearing a, a face mask, and some guy just runs up to her and starts beating her up, you know, because she's wearing a mask. Then there was another case, I think, last week. Asian woman, 34th Street, she was gone in the building. She wasn't wearing any mask. Guy jumps up to her, punches her, dislocates her jaw, and he's asking her, where is your mask? You see, so you can't win. The woman who had the mask was beaten up for wearing a mask. The other Asian woman who wasn't wearing a mask was beaten up because she didn't have a mask. So you can't win. And you have somebody like that speaking out of the White House. And instead of trying to bring people together and stop using words that would divide people, here he is, he's using words that would divide or, or make such so-called invidious comments to incite ill will. That's not what we want. We want to see leadership from the top. People who can bring us together or having a team of people who can say, you know what, let's be constructive. Let's do constructive things. And let's we we deal with a pandemic and we all have to get together work together with each other and see how we can destroy this virus you know and don't have like uh people dropping dead uh left and right and not enough space in the icu and so forth no we don't need that we want to be able to move forward we want to be able to work together with people and if you if you work in the, in the healthcare, as I have over the years, you know, I work with different people. I work with with uh, Chinese people, Filipino people, Hispanic, white, black, all across the world. No, nobody's thinking like that. You know, when you deal with a patient or what have you, you're not thinking, oh, you know, this person is this or that. No, no, you you're dealing with the person and you want to see that they get better. That's your client. That's how you approach it. You see, you, you're a professional. And that's how it should be. Coming from the American president. It should be somebody who's professional. Somebody who's thinking that, yeah. You know what? We are all in this together. We want to move forward. We want to do what's best for the country. And we don't have time to be name calling and you know, coming up with these these terms like uh, a contraction of this or, you know, a takeaway term from this like with Kung Fu and Kung Flu and so forth. No, that's, that's not the way it is. It's not Kung Flu or so forth. No, that to me is not being serious. It's not taking it serious. It's just like joking it's like saying you know what we're just gonna have fun you know it's it's time it's time to have fun with and especially with chinese people that's basically what they're saying it's time to have fun with chinese people we can use this and uh you know it's like it's like the old days in america you know <laughs> and in some way with trump in office 
it's like the old days in America because for some people, yeah, Trump represents the old days in in America, you know, where you could say anything and do what the hell you want, you know, back to the old days.